Hey, welcome back. We are going to be starting the 10.30 a.m. turn. So let's go find the turn record track. And I kind of, it's almost kind of don't even need it because I use the Vassal thing. And uh, my log file tells me what's going on. So uh, one, well, not one small thing, but one big thing is at the end of the last union turn, I made a little mistake and I had Raleigh coming up in reinforcement area J here up the Emmitsburg Road. And he is supposed to come in on L. And his orders are to go to here and then follow Willoughby Run up to another position. So I fixed that. So FYI, if you're watching and following along, Raleigh is actually there. Um, Howard is still supposed to come in there. So he's trucking up the road to get up there and start scoping out the sitch. Uh, and so if you remember, so that was the only uh, change I had to make. And then uh, I got the reinforcements put on here to save a little time. Now, the videos are getting to be over an hour, roughly, on some of them, I think. We're getting pretty close to the hour mark or over an hour. So what I might start doing is I might start breaking them up into a Confederate, a Union turn uh, in the very near future. Just, um, just to kind of break it up so if people are interested in watching certain parts, they don't have to try to find it in the video. But anyway, so we are at the beginning of the 10.30 a.m. turn. And uh, Cutler has followed orders that was given to him by my player that's filling in as a northern general. And the southern general hasn't been able to give any orders yet. Oh, one other thing I wanted to clean up on is Caliph's battery. That one turn I treated them as a small unit. And I was informed that that's not true. It's based on the strength points regardless. So uh, in the ground that they're occupying, it's not the, who has the ability to fire or not. So they would not have been a small unit. It didn't really affect that much because uh, they didn't lose any strength. And we probably needed to pull them back and protect them anyway. So, But just so you're aware, do not go by what I said. Uh, it's the number of strength points in there and with artillery you can be out of ammo, but that does not negate the size of the uh, stack So Caleb's battery is not a small battery even though two out of the five guns are completely out of canister and shot But uh, so Cutler had filled out and followed his order uh, It's gonna take me a little longer to do some stuff That's why I'm thinking of breaking it up because I'm gonna have to start double checking orders now because this was all on autopilot, right? We're still on the recon and force with the, with the rebels. Um, but this is starting to get more complex. And that's, um, you know, I don't want to give too much away in case people are watching, but there's been other orders issued. And um, depending on the scenario or whatever, uh, I have to try to figure out how to follow those orders to the best of my ability. So we'll see how that plays out. But it's interesting now because here's Archer. You know, early on, it looked like they were just going to roll over the the cavalry. Um, they did damage the cavalry. They did uh, 200 casualties, the four strength points, which I think is more than, than actually happened. I want to say it was 150 or something like that, total casualties, but I could be wrong. Um, and then I thought they would just push through, but the timing with the at the double rule, these guys were able to get here, deploy, and uh, following their orders, which they're still on, uh, tried to get over here. So now Archer, who, who thought he had the cab on the run, now sees Federal Infantry. Uh, well, would he have seen them? I guess some of the guys, no, I don't think they'd see him because this ridge line blocks them. So they don't even technically know they're there yet. But we do as a player, and um, maybe they saw some flags just over the crest or whatever. So be interesting now because now I'm doing the Confederate turn and what do I do? There's going to be some some major roles needed by Davis to get his poop in a group here and get moving so he doesn't get court-martialed because he is, if he would have been on time, he could be up in this area and really be pushing hard, but now he's getting, you know, he needs a full move just to get some of his brigade into action. So I'm going to start with this area right here first. Um, well, let's well, maybe not. Let's move this stuff first, just so it's out of the way. So these guys have to be within four hexes, right? So, um, 
So I'm going to go ahead and move these guys here. Uh, I'll put these guys here, and then they're going to go here for two. We'll just stay like that. We're within three. I don't see the huge benefit of getting way out. Um, you know, we got our leaders. I could move Brock and Brawl forward, I guess. So I'll probably do that just so that they have... Now let's do that. Just so that Brock and Bro, if Heath has to move up to support Davis and Archer, uh, he can help there. But the rest of these guys are just sitting. Um, I guess the next question is going to be firing guns. And I already did some calculating, and these guys can see Kayla's battery. Um, but... In the rules, I, I don't usually read a lot of the design rules, but because this was a brand new, a lot of this was brand new to me with the written orders and stuff like that, I did read a lot of them for fun. And firing artillery, just bombarding from way far away, just empties your guns, and it's a pain to get resupplied. So I don't think we're going to just sit here and lob lucky shells at units. Because this is a Napoleon, right? So if we go over here, and it can, well, that can only fire 16. So that's a mute point because this is like 17 or 18. So there's a rifle. We got uh, like two rifle strength points. I can't remember what the H is. Uh, 12 pound, oh, that can't even, that fires 10. We got three strength points here. So we could muster five strength points all together. We'd have to fire three and two with shifts. And, it, you know, because they, the rifles can fire 30 hexes, but you really got to want that shot, right? So I'm not going to do that. So we're just going to deploy these guys, right? <coughs> uh, then we have these guys who have their orders that they can come up and basically they have to stay on Her Ridge Road um, on each side of the road. It did it didn't say that each brigade had to be on each side of the road. I guess technically it kind of does, but I'm playing it that they're just kind of touching the road, both of them, and we're bringing up this other uh, division. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's bring up, uh, I want to see how far scales gets up first. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I've had some requests to zoom in, so hopefully I remember to do that. As you can see a little better. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. One, then you'd have to turn to face this way for two. Uh, that'd be three to go there. Oops. Four, five. I'll just go there for six, I guess. Yeah, I don't like that. That just messes with my OCD big time. Okay, so he was there, so I'll just go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I was just turning him around and dragging it out, making it worse anyway. So six gets into there. These guys can move eight. And I think the swamp is the same for them, or marsh, whatever it is. Marsh swamp. Uh, Call them in open order are the same as line, so but he's got tons of movement. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll just leave them on the ridge. Now these guys are on a road or unfinished railroad, but that doesn't matter because they're in lines, so they can't utilize that, but they can zigzag a little bit. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's a little messy, but <laughs> it's just an OCD thing, folks. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just I like to keep my dudes all in, you know, formation, right? So that's just a me thing. That's not legit. Big thing is they're all within command range of scales. Okay, so he's basically caught up to Perrin. I'm going to move Perrin just because if something changes, I'm not aware of anything that will allow them to start reacting differently. But you never know. 
So we're just going to move them up and see what happens. So one, two, uh, we have this, oh, that was, that scales. So over here we get uh, parents. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think they still pay for that. Slope. Oh, they only pay. Oh, I think I've been doing the slope wrong. I think it's two plus the hex. I think I've only been counting it as one. Okay, so note to self. I'll leave him there. We'll just leave this guy right here. No reason. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's see. One, oh no. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. As long as they don't cross those green lines, they don't pay the extra movement. Uh, Pender, we need to keep everybody. In, well, then the thing with command is, is if they move out of command, if they move, they just have to move towards the leader. So it's not going to be the end of the world. But he's here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got to move him to here. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yes, now they're all in command. And then these guys will start moving up. So let's move uh, Lane. Let's move him next. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's no train issues, so I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm just going to do this because there's no swampy stuff they got to deal with yet or anything that no ridge, no uh, slopes or anything. So they just be in the same formation. Now we got to deal with these guys. So. Actually, I think, so since they're out of range, he would actually have to keep Thomas in range or they have to start moving towards him, I think. So maybe I don't want to move him back yet. So let's move him back. One, two, three, four, six, seven. So he can be here. All right, so then these guys, it'll be half one to move the tail all the way up. So that's one. And they can change their that would cost me a facing, I think, but so it won't matter. But two will say three. I'm trying to decide if I should move these guys or just wait and get information. I'm gonna move him down a few. So so this guy is going to go one, and then he can free facing changes a call or changes the column. So one, or no, that's half. Then it'd go one to move his tail in there. So that's two. Deploy him for three, four, five, and then Thomas. We'll just go one, two, three. So they can, you know, move, they can change out of column. They just have to maximize the most of six movement points to stay in column. So this would be a half. And then he can change uh, one or half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half to move his tail up, five and a half to deploy. And these guys might move wrong with a cut here. If they did that, it'd be one, two, so one, two, two and a half, three to move the tail up in there, and four to deploy. And these guys don't go in column, and they have eight movement. I think they can still use road movement, yeah. So one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so they're done. 
they've moved, they've moved, everyone's moved. The artillery is not going to do anything right now because I don't want to just run them out because later on there should be an opportunity for a late afternoon attack with a little more gusto, and I want that artillery for then. And right now, neither the north or the south have any um, ammo trains, so if they run out, they're just useless. Okay, so let's go with these guys here. Um, so let's move these guys first. Now these guys' order is to go to... Uh, it's like just down the road. I want to say it's 1410. No, 1613. So basically just down to here, right on the other side of this infantry, their orders are to move down to here. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I gotta look up. I can't. It's been a few days since I played, so I already kind of forgot. But um, I just need to double check the. I think it's every four guns. Yeah, one hex per four gun strength point. It's three for infantry. Cavalry mounted is every one strength point. So uh, he's good. He doesn't need a tail. None of these guys will need a tail. And I think you can stack as long as they're not more than the regular amount, right? So I think what we'll do is we'll bring this. So these guys will just come in and call them. Oh, you know, I'm going to do. I'm save myself a lot of work here. Bring all these. Oops. Bring all of this down here to work with. And let's see here. So they would go there, they can stack here because they only, they can have up to four, and then we'll put the general here, and then we'll select these guys, do a little nifty, oops, what's he doing that for? Okay, so there's our reinforcements, that's the only ones we got this turn, which is, seems kind of late because they've been pouring in over here. Now we get to the nitty gritty. Oh, and you know what? I needed to see if Brock and Bro could even do anything. Oh, I rolled a one. He's a zero zero. So I'm gonna have to go back. Well, you know what? I can do that real quick. Like we're gonna have to put Brock and Bro back. Dirty rotten rassafras. Okay, well, let's go back and look. See where he was. Sorry about that. I like to run a tighter ship and not be sloppy, but things happen. All right, so let's go look at the file. So this is just playing through the file. All right, so we're not starting a new log file. I just have to go look at where Brockenbrough was. I rolled a one, so he's going to stay there. So he did not move forward with everybody like I was planning. So... Let's see if we can shrink this down a little bit. So, yeah, okay. All righty, let's get rid of that. Let's put that over there. So this is kind of nifty, <laughs> despite the fact that it was a complete pain in the butt because I screwed up. Uh, okay, so those guys are there. 26 North Carolina has to go here. Oh no, that no 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 that is a different guy. That is that is Pettigrew. Heath is just here. Um or, or not Heath, Brock and Bro. So Brock and Bo was back here with the 55th Virginia, I believe. Yep. And then the 40th Virginia was right here. And then the 22nd Virginia was here. And the 47th Virginia was back here. So 
Let's get rid of that. Thank you very much. Don't save it. Okay, so there's a the beauty of having Vassal. If you screw up, it's not that hard to go back. Okay, so now that was the roll for Brock and Bro. It's a good thing I didn't decide to come back and check that because if I'd have rolled that now for Davis, he won't do anything. So first, before we do anything, Archer would like to know what Davis is going to do. He's going to move half flip and speed again. So three movement points. All right, so we're going to try to pile everyone in that direction as quick as we can. We do have some, well, you could move two and fire is the rule because it's half rounded up. And I only have three movement. So I think what I'm going to do is go one, two, and I'm going to sit behind this ridge and wait for some of my buddies to get here. Because there's artillery sitting here, they'll just pound me. Now, if this guy goes one, two, three, he's on a ridge. Probably have line of sight. I don't want to take the time to figure that out as much as I just want to. I mean, it doesn't matter that much. Well, his arc of fire goes here. So if I go up here, he can't, he'd can't. he have to turn, and then there's a modifier. So we'll go one, two, well, that'll be a flank shot. One, two, and we're going to change facing. I don't know why I keep thinking that's the right one for facing. It is, but I could do it in one click instead of four. Uh, this guy is going to go one, two, three. 42nd Mississippi. One, two, one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. I'm trying to keep them all behind this ridge as much as possible. I got this guy here who's well, he'll be able to stay behind the ridge too, I guess, but he'll go into the cut. One, two, three. So he's this ridge right here. I don't think you can have a line of sight down there. I'll have to check that later, but that's fine. He'll he'll take a chance on that. You can only use the canister to range three, I believe. Yeah. So it would just be a regular shot. So this leaves us our final guy, Archer. He's got one shaken unit with a hundred guys that once he takes another shot will be wrecked. This guy, if he takes another casual, another strength point loss, will be wrecked. This guy won't, but he's got muskets. So I find it fascinating that. I was watching this, you know, two turns ago or three turns ago and thinking, man, I don't know how the Union can hold the line at all. They're going to get overrun. And now I'm getting skittish with Archer thinking he's got a, well, and then with Davis farting around for not moving one turn, moving two turns half, and I think one turn full speed. I think Arch, Archer's got to, got to kind of drag his feet a little bit and reposition his troops. You know, those are full strength, pretty juicy size. You can look under leaders, so this this would be legal. Even though I know it, even though I'm playing solitaire, I still try not to look because I forget stuff. But these are, you know, there's 400 men there, 400 men there, 250 there, 250. I mean, was that 1,300 guys plus another 300, 1,600 men? And we know they got artillery up here on this hill now. Hmm, thinking out loud here a little bit. I guess part of me is thinking we need to... Because he, he doesn't have a movement restriction. He has his orders. You can follow, you know, his orders are try to take this, this area here with both brigades. You can drag your feet a little bit, but 
you have to give it a good shot. Now these guys will be moving to get over this ridge line, so anything they do will spark opening volleys. Oh my goodness. And, they, and it's not like you can do one opening volley and then they're used up. They can opening volley to anyone that messes with them. And we got to be careful with our flank here because these guys wouldn't know their orders. I do know their orders, but if they're on orders to attack, that would be bad. This guy is simply going to move up one and be hiding in these trees, and he's shaken. So we don't want to risk any... Well, you don't take morale checks when you're the moving guy, but that's that's two flipping strength points. I mean, that's pathetic. Although, man, do I just do it? Two, he'll have a shift. I mean, they're C morales on this end, just the way they marched up. They were Cs. And get lucky and start pushing some of those guys back life can get good yeah you can hear the wheels moving all right this guy here can move three and still fire and he's gonna do that so he's gonna go one two three okay then he's gonna declare a fire here so then the 76 new york gets to fire at the first tennessee with an opening volley well, you know what? I got a little bit ahead of myself. Order. Okay, yeah, because there is no orders for the uh, Confederates. I should be going through this because I'm not veteran enough where I can just, yep, I don't have nothing to do. So just uh, we need to not get so sloppy. Okay, so opening volley. They're firing here. John Burns is hanging out with 76 New York. Oh, that's right. They're a C morale, but they're going to get a minus two. Well, whatever. It is what it is. Uh... That's even if we do anything. Okay, so it's at a range of two, so it's a five or six to cause a hit. And I should make sure the only column shifts are canister or if you're wrecked. There we go. Five. They did do a damage. So decrease. So they did they did cause a casualty. <laughs> Archer's getting kind of torn up here a little bit. I really, I thought they were just going to steamroller right over those cavalry and take that. I thought this would be the first game and that I've ever played, and I'm going to capture what they call Lee's Lane here at Gettysburg. And now it's not even looking like I'm going to even be able to hold McPherson's Ridge. <laughs> so, all right, so then I get to fire now. So it's rifled, so there's no special stuff. Um, I'm two hexes away, so it's one shift to the left. Uh, there's no other modifiers. There's nothing for uh, the rear, disorganized, protective terrain, or open order capabilities. So I start on the five column. So that did hurt because we were six to eight. Now we're four to five, and we get the shifts over the two to three. So now we need a seven, where initially, if they wouldn't have hit us, we'd need a five. So here we go. A seven. So barely. But we'll take it. But with John Burns, the old coot out there, He's yelling at all these whippersnappers to hold the line. <laughs> so he's a negative two. Mm, that's the only modifier. So it's going to be on the C column with a negative two. So it's, oh, it's still going to do something, though. So negative two, it was a ten. But they would have lost the guy, and they would have really ran back and been disorganized. But because of John Burns, I guess they're only going to go shaking and back one. So, they start to run, and good old John Burns goes, hey, 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 you guys, hold the line. <laughs> so, sorry, that's my best John Burns impersonation there. Oh, my goodness. These guys are not going to attack. I'm thinking of these two coming up on this ridge and trying to smack this unit here now they have a minus two liter as well so that's not great odds the shaken doesn't really hurt them next turn <coughs> i guess it'd be really beneficial oh you know what i could do so i'm still learning maybe these guys will drift up and they'll take on that shaken unit 
So let's go look at with our muskets. What do we need for our benefit of the muskets? I think we got to be within two. Now, buck and ball, you got to be at hex range one. Mm. Okay, well, we can try that because we can try to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave Archer in there because he's a negative two, and we're gonna need him. Oh no, I can't get within one. All right, we're just gonna do this then. We're gonna go one, two, three. All right. We're going to take a shot again at these guys. Now they can they can do an opening volley again. So it's that range because uh, I don't that's not restricted to just once as far as I know as long as the unit as long as I move and try to do something uh, fire at them they can fire at me. So it's uh, 5 or 6 to do damage. Oops, I rolled 2d6. I didn't count. <laughs> that one counted. Zinger. My goodness. Okay. Oh, and if you do take the casualty, you do have to make a leader loss check. Leader loss check. This is the other case. He's fine. Okay, now firing with him. We only have now two. Well, the two strength points didn't affect our column because two to three was the same. We're not going to get our shift for the muskets because we couldn't get within one hex or I would have tried. Uh, this is not great. I think it's just straight up. Oh no, and then it's one shift left for the range because it's range two. So I'm on the one column, so I need an eight or better to cause a problem. A 10. Well, that causes a casualty. Decrease the strength. Old John Burns has got to make a roll to see what happens. See, he's fine. He he's been shot up in several. In the, what did he take? Like two or three wounds or something that day, or a bunch of them. Now they got to make their morale check. So he's fine, but they are shaken. So he, it's only going to be a minus one. Oh, this I got to remember this, folks. This is such a new concept for me. We had the cowardly legs from when they, I got to remember the cowardly legs. That's such a crucial part. It hasn't really been a big factor yet because the cavalry would always run off. And with the Confederates, the cavalry wasn't doing a lot of shooting or it was just artillery and the artillery was driving off artillery and you don't put cowardly legs for artillery. I got to remember the cowardly legs. It's a major part of the game. I don't think we've messed anything up with that, but I just... Why am that's not sticking in my head yet? So now this makes difference. So we got shaken is plus one, cowardly legs is plus one, and that don't doesn't matter if there was three cowardly legs here, it would only be one. So that's going to take care of burns. So it's going to be a straight up roll on the C column. So the Confederates are hoping for an eight or better. They get a four. So nothing. But they didn't cause a casualty. Oh, and I gotta remember to do this just because uh, it's just making it's just getting into good habits because when I'm playing with you know multiple divisions on here and cores, it's gonna get gonna get complex. Now I got two guys left. I'm thinking ugh, I'm thinking these guys might just move up here to protect this flank. Right, so that these guys, because if these guys turn to fire, then they can opening volley on them. So that was maybe foolish to get in, to get that far forward, but I'm going to do that. That's one. If they take another one, they're wrecked. These guys are. A, C morale with a minus two. We got three strength points. Ugh. I'm just deciding if I want to fire or not. I don't think that's a great option. Oh, well, how many strength points they got there? Five. Well, they're going to be blazing away. I also got to... Let's see. 
screws are eased there. One, two, three, four, five. So I can get out to here and still be in command range with this guy, which I think we're going to have to try to do. I'm just deciding if it's worth the risk because if nah, I'm gonna, I, I got to try to hold on for one more turn for Davis. And the, if you move here and don't do anything, they can't fire at you. But if I try to fire at them now, they get opening volley. These guys should, they'll rally up this turn to the, well, they're only 100 guys, but that's better than nothing. So, all right, then, okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to go one, two. Eddie, quiet. Okay, so back to the, all right, so we're going to move him there. And I think that's all we're going to do for the Confederates. Because Davis is dragging his feet. I mean, we should be able to just sweep this whole flipping flank and have part of this road easy peasy. These are decent dudes with a dork of a commander. <laughs> but then Brockenbro didn't move either, so whatever. I, so I think we're solid on all that. We got our reinforcements. That's the end of the phase. I'm going to go with that. Uh, I'm going to come back and I'll, I'll just do the union turn later when I get a chance. Um, duty calls. going to help the wife here. She brought groceries. That's who you heard coming in. And the dog barking. But So I'll go do that. And then uh, but let's finish up the turn. I guess I always feel like that's the end of the turn and it's not. So command phase, you do rally, right? So we, we can go to the uh, remove movement because we're done then we can do uh, CSA rally we can remove fired and we can and you always remove all the cowardly legs at the end of each phase they don't stay up there for any amount of time it's just for that turn in fact it, if like let's say this guy ran let's say he was infantry and ran off and we put a cowardly legs there and no one's going to be around that you don't even have to put it really okay so that's it so i will uh get on to the next one here after that and we'll go from there thanks for joining me and uh it's going to be interesting i got to look up my orders for the union because there is couriers running around right now and see if anything happens time wise i know some units are getting orders some are not so thanks for joining me have a good one okay welcome back so there's a few things going on um uh, this was, um, I was working on these on a video and then I had to look up a rule. So I stopped and I thought, well, I didn't do much in the video. So I'll just start where I left off. So this roll right here was a three. That was Reynolds command roll, which he failed. So he would not be able to issue any new orders, which may or may not matter. This roll right here is an eight. Uh, that was, uh, Wadsworth. Uh, accepting an order because a courier came. All right, so he has now accepted a new order, and uh, I know what that order is. Now, there's an interesting thing which I'll have to post on Board Game Geek, so here's how I'm going to handle it because this seems to make sense. Okay, you have to roll, so we're, we're past eight turns into the game. And the no fluke stoppage, as far as I know, is only for the recon and force with the Confederates. It didn't say anything. It was, Eddie, go on. It wasn't, it's a dog whining because he wants to go outside. Because uh, he hears his mom up there. So um, there's no rule about the Union not having fluke stoppages. Now, most of their stuff is going to be move orders. But in this instance, um, right now... Uh, Cutler is under uh, an attack order. Now, there was some debate, not really debate, but I asked some questions on the Board Game Geek forum, and I was given orders, and I, I can share this now because it's over with, but um, Cutler was given orders to uh, move in uh, at the double to the Elizabeth Schurz farm and then uh, deploy there and move up to... Uh, take a ridge, okay, to defend this ridge. So I I did everything, but now I'm now there's an enemy there that wasn't there before. So what do you do? 
Some guys are saying that's too many orders. You can't give the order to move, deploy, and then defend. Uh, so we'll work on trying to simplify the orders. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. I want to learn how to play it. I'm not saying it's not right. I'm not saying it is right. I'm saying that's what I'm trying to learn. So, But um, as I was working on this turn, I ran into a problem. So if anybody has the answer, please throw it in the comment section. But you have to test for fluke stoppage and we're now eight we're now the ninth turn into this game and you only you you only get to ignore fluke stoppage the first eight turns and the confederates get to ignore fluke stoppage because they're in recon at force there's nothing that says that the union is also included on that because it's under the confederate rules right so i'm assuming they can't that they're not allowed to just fight willy-nilly they have restrictions, like they can't attack west of Willoughby Run, to, that kind of stuff, or something like that. Uh, it doesn't matter because we're not even close to that right now. But um, so now we have uh, Cutler's Brigade is in a position where he needs to take this ridge because what the consensus was on, on the forum is, well, these guys essentially are not an attack order right now because they can't occupy that ridge without fighting, right? So it's like, okay, I get that. So they said they would do that for now, and they would probably say that orders can only give one specific thing, like move here, although we are using the special defense rule, which I think was the point of that. But the guy, the Union General wanted them to deploy back here and move up so that they wouldn't run up onto this ridge and call them. And, and, uh, run into the enemy so maybe that's too much planning i don't know anyway back to my whole point i was trying to make is cutler is in attack meredith is in movement you know column and so is raleigh and soon to be stone so my understanding is you roll for the division to have a fluke stoppage so i'm going to roll for wadsworth's division but I'm thinking that these guys, when you're in a move order, which they're still in, they don't roll for fluke stoppage. So I'm guessing that if I roll for Wadsworth and there's a fluke stoppage, then, then Cutler's brigade stops. Because you don't roll by brigade, you roll by division. So if I'm doing that wrong, somebody let me know. So let's roll for that. All right. So he needs... Uh, Let's see how to, I've never done a fluke stoppage, so make new flukes the first eight. We got that. Dice modifiers. Minus one original division leader wounded or killed. No. Plus two command has needed reserves. No, we don't have any reserves right now. Um, minus two for night terms. No. So base check, two dice, pass on a modified six plus. Otherwise, roll two dice below. Minus one at night. Make no second roll if you pass the base check. So his uh, first number is his command roll. So he basically needs a four or higher, is my understanding. He rolled a five. So there's no fluke stoppage for Wadsworth. So now I can act on the divisional orders, which I will do. So before we do that, let's go over and do these. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the movement first. Oh, we should go through this. Uh, okay. I already... So the only one I had to roll for was to see if Cutler accepted his new... Because Wadsworth received his orders before. He issued them to Cutler and Meredith. Cutler has now received his. Meredith has not. Uh, okay, so no attack recovery. There was no attack recovery to do. There was no fluke stoppage. Eddie, go on. You're not going on site. So, activity phase. Movement. So let's do Meredith first. Okay, so we have Meredith moving. Uh, he's in at the double, so he can move 16 hexes. Uh, and you don't get the double hexes on roads. And then this was here because that was part of the order, so I'll be able to take that off this turn. 
So I'm just going to move these guys and I'll move everybody up. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 10 to there. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 to here. Hey, I spun it the right way. All right, so let's zoom out for this part because I need the space. I'm going to grab all of these guys and move them up. Oh, I forgot the exact path, but it's not a super big deal because it'd be the same movement either way from this hex. So it doesn't really matter which when I decided to move over. So we'll just do that. So these guys got some pretty long tails for their columns. So we'll say they took that route because it would have been the same movement no matter what. And I'm deleting that because I don't need that anymore. Are you leaving? Can you... Uh, are you leaving leaving because he whines when you're outside because he wants to come out okay but just so you know okay okay that was the wife she's taken off so we get the whiny dog again which i like the whiny dog i just don't like when he whines when i'm trying to do stuff and so i don't know if you can hear him but he's like running around right now searching for her. <laughs> you know you're just trying to make your video and you just like you just got to keep living life right okay so let's uh, i'm just gonna go like this and say that's good enough i don't need him to be facing so there's meredith's brigade he's following his order uh these guys got their order there they can do at the double as well so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13, 14, 15, 16. I, I guess I should have known they were uh, one hex behind, but whatever. So they're moving up. Uh, all right, now, so Raleigh has orders, and these are in the books. I don't mind telling these orders because anybody who owns the game could look them up. He's supposed to go to Pitzer Schoolhouse and then follow the road up to Willoughby Run, and he's going to be working his way up into this area here, right? So let's go ahead and move him. I'm just going to grab him, and then I'll move everybody up. So one, two, oh, yes, yeah, I'm just going to count 16 hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right to there. <laughs> It's like the 16th move is always just to where it's going to start moving the screen. But basically, this is Willoughby Run here, right? It comes along here, and he has to follow that, right? So it's coming up here, and that's his orders. So let's grab the rest of this. We'll just move it up here for ease of distribution. And we'll, oop, and we'll grab them one at a time and move them here and then we'll spin them around and do all that good work so this column this was the column I fixed that I accidentally had coming in on the road to the south and they're all fixed now all right so let's grab all of these because we know we're going to turn everybody at least once so yeah I did it the right way all right, so now we can take him off, him off, him off. Uh, those can come off, and we'll turn the other guys one more. Oops, I left those on. That doesn't matter. They're following the road either way. Okay, so that's Rowley. That's his. And again, it didn't matter because I made my, my fluke stoppage roll, and I'll have to do some. I'm going to ask on the forums later on board game. <coughs> Geek, but my understanding is if, if you're in movement, you don't have to. Well, the, you roll for the division, but there's brigades in the division that are under move orders, and there's brigades in the division that are up front defending, right? So we're now attacking. And then we got this guy. We got Stone here, and his orders are to move up to the same schoolhouse, and then he has 
I think some different, uh, he has a more specific hexes he's supposed to go to. So I will, we'll look into that later, but he's not going to get close enough. This cost a plus one. So it'd be uh, clear plus one. So we're going to go, I'll show you how I'm going to do the movement, right? So he's with the head of the column. So this would be one to here, right? Two X, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because they're crossing this thing. Then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. What am I doing? I'm counting double. <laughs> okay, let's do it this way. I get eight movement points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, that's where they would be. It's because I was giving myself double duty there. I was counting two hexes as one movement point, but then I was counting up to 16, so that doesn't really work. Uh, this guy here needs two tails. And then we'll put this unit on there. And he's going to need uh, two tails as well. And then this dude comes on. So they're basically coming up, coming out as a snake. And he's going to need two tails. All right. So that'll be Stone's first move. And we'll get into his order later. I don't mind sharing the orders that are in the book. Because like I said, anybody can look them up. That being said, they can be given other orders if Reynolds is allowed to issue any, but he did not get to issue orders again this turn. All right, I think we're done. Oh, no, we still got one leader down here. We got Howard who came in on this road himself, so he can move 24 hexes because he has 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 to there. 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so he's booking up that road. Now, we get back to the exciting part. Um, we have Kalis Battery still defending. Oh! I did mention in the last video that they're not considered a small unit, just an FYI in case anybody missed that. Um, it's the number of guns, not who's got ammo or not. So we get to utilize these guys on... So I'm, try, I'm thinking of their order. I don't want to read the order. Want to make sure that just want to make sure that's recording. I always think, oh my goodness, did I forget to hit record? So I'm thinking of the order and how to obey the order in the situation I'm in. Can look under leaders so they know there's only a hundred guys sitting here. I got John Burns, but it's a shaken unit, so that's helpful. Um, I think Caliph probably needs to face this way and fire. And we got to push with these two leaders because we got a weak archer here. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to fire with this guy and I'm going to fire with this guy here to here and here to here and then these guys are going to come along and charge and see if we can push anything back. So, all right, so these guys are going to fire and it's a, there's no, so I'm going to fire. Am I zoomed in enough? Yeah, that's 
that's crisp, right? That's good and clear. Um, just to get down into the action. I like to be zoomed out for movement so I get an overall strategic picture. And then, you know, when you're fighting, it's nice to be able to see stuff. So, okay, so we're going to fire this unit here. The I can't see what they are. The 76 New York, I think, is the shaking things on them with John, with John Burns. It's going to fire over here at the 14th Tennessee. I haven't moved or anything, so they get no opening volley. So let's go look at combat. Uh, we have seven strength points, so six to eight is the max column. They're rifled, and we're two hexes away, so that's going to be one shift to the four to five column. The shaken doesn't hurt us. Uh, so that's it. Because if we so shaken doesn't hurt you, it's kind of like a step loss in your morale. But so you're getting closer if you're disorganized. I think you only get half your strength points. So we'll do that. It's on the four to five column. We need a six or better. We rolled a five. My goodness. All right, we're going to continue with our plan. We're going to fire these guys. They are five strength points. Um, so they start in the four to five column. It's going to be the same thing. One shift left to the two to three because of the one, the two hex range. So we need a seven or better. They get an eight. So that's going to be a morale check. We're going to mark them fired. These guys are a B morale. Uh, there should be no negative modifiers for them because they're not wrecked yet. Uh, uh, they are small, and the small is only if it's small arms at range one or charging, so that doesn't affect them. So that's it. It's going to be a straight-up B-roll, so unless they just have bad luck, an 11, they got bad luck. So an 11 is disorganized, back three, lose one. So you first you disorganize. You do it in that order of the stuff, right? So lower morale, lower morale. So they're disorganized. <laughs> back three, one, two. They're just going to stay in the woods. I mean, I don't see any benefit to why I'd want to put them in harm's way. And then they're going to lose one. And that little red two is a big deal. Because now they are wrecked. And these guys fired and these guys fired. Okay, now. That's just an HQ. Now we're going to use the 147th New York. So they're going to have to spend one movement to change facing. So that's one two, three. Now we're going to do a closing roll. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, not a bloodlust. What am I doing? I don't think it'll matter, but just so I get in the habit of it, I'm going to put cowardly legs and maybe if somebody retreats and then they're next to it later, maybe it does matter. Uh, no, I forgot where they were. 147 and 32... So they were here. They did a facing change for one, two, three. So the fourth movement point, can you put them halfway? No. This will be four movement points to go here. They got to make a closing roll. And that is morale? No. Combat? Closing roll. I need a three plus. Uh, there's no positives for me. So they fail. Now they started, where did I say they started? They started in 3031. No, they didn't start in 30. I got to read backwards. 3231 right here. So one, two, three. So they did move to here. Three movement points. If you don't use more than half and you fail to close, you can fire. But now that they're going to, now that they've moved, this allows them an opening volley and they, you have to have range, but they do have range, right? They're just out of range. They got, or just in range of two. So it's a two hexes. They need a five or a six to score a hit. 
they score a hit. Uh, decrease emitted strength. That's not going to affect them too much because they they got a big whopping seven. So these guys are going to fire. I'm going to do it now. They are on the six to eight column, and it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be one shift to the left because of range. Uh, so they need a six or better to do some damage. They get a four. Wow. They're just not doing it. <laughs> I mean, they get some luck here, but they just, they've had two epic fails. All right, I'm going to close this because I want to look at this a little bit. Now, this is where this game, I think, is really fascinating because I would like to just attack this guy, but I have to think about the orders I have, and is that fulfilling the order? I don't know if it is. So I don't think they can. So... Now you can drag your heels a little bit, right? What to do, what to do. So there's a five and a six. Just trying to, th well, we got Kalos battery. I could still see what he does as well. I'm thinking he's gonna have to, well, if he turns and fires, I believe that is, you can do opportunity fire at that point. I'd really like to turn him because I don't want him to get flanked. You know what? We're going to take a chance. This is probably really bad, but I want to fire canister at this bad boy here without letting them return fire. I got three strength points firing canister. Let's go see if that's worth it. If I got three strength points firing canister... And it's, what is it? It's, are they rifles? They're all rifles, I think. Is, is that right? Yeah. So they're all normal. Normal canister is one shift to the right out to three hexes. Because if I... Yeah, because this guy, if they fire, the top guy is going to take damage and then I only got two strength points so doo -doo 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 -doo. so I think I'm just gonna blaze away and see what happens we're gonna take a chance we're gonna take a chance that this clown here is gonna get half movement or no movement got a 50 50 chance there and even if he doesn't I mean he can't move that far and fire on my flank he can disturb so let's do that all right, so we got three strength points. Uh, we got no shifts for range. We get one for canister. There's nothing on the rear. They're not disorganized, no predictive, and they're not open. So it's the four to five column. They rolled a six, which is going to be a morale check. And it was, I'm sorry, I didn't, if I did, it wasn't clear. They were firing straight ahead at these guys. So probably should have fired at them just because. I could have knocked them out and made them, made them, uh, uh, what's the word I can't, why do I keep forgetting that word? Uh, broken or whatever it is, wrecked. Uh, but it wouldn't have mattered because I only rolled a morale check. So we got a B morale check. It's a straight up roll. There should, there's no other negative modifiers. Uh, So straight up roll. A six should be good, so nothing happened. So these guys all fired. Boom, boom, boom. Just they're just not getting her. They are not getting it done. Okay, well. I'm trying to think what I want to do the rest of the year. I got two more units over here. Oh, I forgot I have an artillery here. This artillery is going to fire. Okay, so we got six guns. 
We're just going to fire these dudes on the ridge. So we're at range of seven. We get we totally got line of sight because we're up on higher ground than the guy in between us, and they're up on a ridge. It is at range of seven, though. One, two, three, four, five. Bummer. I was hoping it was six because that's the modifier. So let's go to the chart. All right, uh, combat. All right, what are those? Those rifled guns? Those are rifled guns. There's six of them. Uh, so they have, yeah, just tons of range. At six to nine, it goes one to the left. So we're on the six to eight column. We're going to drop to the four to five. There's no other firepower or other target modifiers. So we're in the four to five, firing regular shot. We need at least a six. We get a 10, which is golden for the firer because that's a one loss and no ammo depletion because that would have been a bummer to deplete the ammo right because that whole thing is depleted and we have no neither side has any ammo ammunition they can get right now so we're going to decrease that to a four and then now they got to make a morale check so an eight or higher is bad for them there's no Modifiers, no leaders, shaken, disorganized, wrecked, rear, small, cowardly legs, knight, or artillery, or cavalry being fired at. Uh, there's no stone walls or any of that. So it's just going to be a straight up roll on the C column. Wowzer. C with an 11 is disorganized. Back four, lose one. So first they disorganize. Oops, wrong thing. Increase it back here. Uh, lower morale. Lower morale. All right, so 11 was disorganized back four, and then they're going to lose one. Now, I want to get these guys back over by their brigade, and you move hexes, terrain doesn't matter, and you have to move into one of your rear hex sides. So one, two, three, four, and then they lose one. So they're one, okay, so it really, oh, and then just, is that where he was? Yeah. Uh, just, I need to get in the habit of that, because that rule, I just totally blanked that out on. I'm, I'm hoping I get that down. So they fired, right? So this, this is just crazy. So like over here where I really wanted to do the most damage, nothing seemed to happen. And then we had a couple of things that happened in the middle. But So now Archer is really getting beat up, right? I mean, he's got one guy's wrecked. This guy's one from wrecked. He's one from wrecked. They're one from wrecked. I mean, he's done. Uh, I don't think he can call it off yet. Because only one guy's wrecked, but... It's getting pretty close where he's going to have to call off the recon and force for him. <coughs> All right, so now we got these guys, so let's finish them up. And they have their orders. This guy is going to go one, two, three. not know if I want to start getting silly. He's, he's going to go three, four, five. And the reason I'm going to do that is because he's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm thinking, you know what? If you, you know, 150, what is that, 250 men here want to come rumble with us, we'll let you swing out. And then you can deal with our gun, you can deal with our whole other brigade coming up. It's kind of interesting is when I play this stuff, I just feel very schizophrenic because I'm pulling for one side, then the next. I want to have a good result, but then I want guys to rally, and it's just crazy. <laughs> it's just it's just, I just enjoy the whole process, right? I just enjoy seeing how guys are doing, what they're doing, how things are going. Um, so I, I think we're in an okay position. It's a little, 
discombobulated right now. They're following their orders. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next turn with Davis. Let's zoom out a little bit so we get a bigger look. Let's zoom out one more. So, you know, we got Davis. Uh, we got Meredith coming up. These guys still seem like they're, yeah, they're Raleigh's a way off. He, his orders are basically to come up and I think come up here. And it might be to hook up with, with his division. I'm not 100% sure, but I do know he has to come up this way and then try to hook up. So if he can do that and, like, get on the flank, that'll be good. But uh, it really shows you how vital it was that this other part of the brigade, was, the other part of the division wasn't allowed to come up. You know, if they had Brock and Bro and Pettigrew attacking at the same time, you know, it'd be four brigades on one and even two. Even with the Iron Brigade, that's a lot of weathering firepower. I mean, these guys aren't small. These guys are 11s and 12s, and they're B-rated. See, you know, well, these guys are all B-rated, and these guys are A. It's just, you know, yeah, they're just not allowed to with the restrictions. And I'm fine with that. I understand why they're doing it. Um, because otherwise you would just steamroller the Union and you'd be back on this before historically possible. And then as everyone's flowing in, it's a done deal, right? It wouldn't matter. Okay, so let's go back. Um, I always feel like when I do the last activation, I'm done, but that's not true. I'm not done. So then we would do rally, okay? So I like to do remove move markers right away. Then we're just going to go down the list. We're going to remove cowardly legs. We're going to remove fired, and we're going to rally U.S. units, which I think the only one was maybe here or something. And that's where we're at. So, I don't know. Good stuff. Uh, Archer's looking pretty rough with two disorganized guys. That's not good. Uh... I do have some order rolls I have to make pretty soon that are going to be interesting to see what those do. Um, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's where we're at. That's the uh, end of the 10.30 a.m. turn. So when we do the next video, it'll be 10.45 and things are starting to get a little heated. So I like it. Thanks for watching.